Hi, great stuff. Welcome to great stuff mathematics trigonometry. And this is our part two. We already did our part one where we were focusing on trigonometry revision for grade 11 and, and some key basics for grade 10. Okay, so this is our part two and we'll be focusing on compound angle identities. Okay, here's the content outline and you know that in our part one, which was uh, the revision uh, trigonometry that we did, uh, we were focusing on grade 11 trigonometry and some bit of grade 10. And this is our unit two, and I want us to focus really on the parts of this session, which is compound angle identity. So double angle identities, I'll do it in part three. I just want you to really focus and really conceptualize compound angle identities in this uh, session and don't forget we are still using platinum mathematics learners book and mind action series uh, mathematics textbook and workbook okay okay compound angle identities what are compound angle how are they for okay so compound angle they just simply involve trigonometric ratios right what do we mean when we say trigonometric ratios we know that if we have something like sine it's a trigonometric ratio cos is a trigonometric ratio tan is a trigonometric ratio okay so they just simply involve trigonometric ratios sine cos and tan uh, of the sum of two angles what is happening they are summing up two angles right or the different between the difference between two angles that is they're subtracting two angles so today we'll focus on the compound angle of sine and the compound angle of cos formulas okay so they just simply involve this uh, uh these sums of angles or the difference between angles so here is it so now the compound angle of sine formula it says if you have sine a plus b then it will be the same as sine cos cos sine. So you really need to uh, 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 internalize this, uh, and you you'll 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 really understand this more as you practice and practice a lot of questions related to compound angles and and so on. Okay. So for now, just know the formula that if 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 you have sine a plus b, this is the compound angle of sine. If you are adding then it will be equal to what? To sine cos cos sine. So it's basically sine A cos B cos A sine B. So because it's sine, we keep the sine. Very simple as that. So because it was positive there and we, we still remain, uh, we, we're going to keep it what? We're going to keep it positive. So take a look at this interchange between the ratios here. They just say sine cos cos sine. Can you see? So then you'll know that is a compound angle of what? Of sine. And don't forget, we keep the the sine. So it's 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 really simple like that. Okay. Let's let's move to this one here. Sine a minus b, right? Obviously, to be sine cos cos sine. But because it was negative, we're gonna keep the sine also, and it will remain what? It will remain negative. Then you just put sine a cos b cos a sine b. Okay. So that's that's the formula for compound angles of sine. Let's go to compound angle of of cos. Compound angle of cos. Okay. So with the compound angle of cos, uh, there's a quite it's it's really different to, to the compound angles of sine, right? Uh, to the compound angle formulas of sine. Okay. So with cos, if we have cos a plus b. So for cos, you'll see it by cos cos sine sine. There's no interchange there between like saying sine cos cos sine right as in like in uh, compound angle of sine formula so with cos it will say cos cos sine sine but with cos we change the sign and with sine we keep the the sign that's it so with cos if it's positive here you're gonna change the sign so that it can be what can be negative so if it was positive we're gonna write it as negative then you just say cos a cos b sine a sine b also with this one here where you have cos a minus b so with this one obviously because it's compound angle of cos it's gonna say cos cos sine sine but because it's negative with cos we change the sign right very important so if it's negative 
is going to be what? It's going to be positive there. So it will be cos A cos B plus sine A sine B. So these are basically uh, the compound angles of, 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 of uh, sine and cos. Uh, okay. Okay, let's now look at example one. And uh, it says expand each of the following, right? So we have A number one. Uh, we are given cos x minus y. They say expand, right? So we know that this is compound angle for what? For cos. And for cos, it will be cos cos sine sine, right? So it's cos x cos y sine x sine y, right? So because it's negative with cos, we change the sign and it will be positive. Okay. Let's go to number two. We are given sine A minus 20 degrees, right? Sine A minus 20 degrees. So with sine, to say what? To say sine A cos 20 degrees, right? Because there's an interchange there with sine. Compound angle of sine, we say sine cos, right? Because it's sine, we keep the what? We keep the sine. If it's negative, it's gonna remain negative. Then we'll say cos a sine 20 degrees so that's basically how you rewrite the one for for sine okay let's go to number three we are given sine 2 alpha plus 45 degrees right sine 2 alpha plus 45 degrees how do we do this this one is a compound angle for for sine then it will say sorry about this to say what to say sine 2 alpha Multiply by what? By cos 45. Then, because with, with the one for sine, we say sine cos and cos sine, right? So, because it's positive and this one is for sine, we keep the, we keep the sine. Then we say cos 2 alpha, then what? Then sine 45, right? So, we have special angles there. We can expand it further. We can simplify it further, right? If you want, uh, we can change that to be 1 over root 2, that one to be 1 over root 2. But now I just wanted to show you how you can expand this, uh, these expressions using the knowledge of compound angles. Okay, let's go to number B. Okay, with, with B, they are saying show that cos 90 degrees plus theta is equal to minus sine theta using the approximate compound angle formula right so we have to use the approximate compound angle formula to show that really cos 90 degrees is goes to minus sine uh, a theta uh, 90 degrees plus theta is goes to minus sine theta okay we have cos 90 degrees plus theta and we know the compound angle for cos it says cos cos sine sine right because it's for cos so it will say cos 90 degrees cos theta because it's positive here for cos we change the, the what the sign but for sine we keep the sign okay so to say also say sine 90 degrees sine theta what is cos 90 degrees 90 degrees is a special angle we know cos 90 degrees zero multiplied by cos theta minus or you can basically use your calculator to get that cos 90 degrees so sine 90 degrees is one multiplied by what by sine theta then we have zero times cos theta, it will be zero. Minus one times sine theta, it will be sine theta. So zero minus sine theta, it will be minus sine theta. Can you see? We have really showed that indeed cos 90 degrees plus theta, it will be the same as minus sine theta using the knowledge of compound angles. Okay. Okay, let's flip this. Let's look at example two. And now... These are those kind of questions where they will say, uh, simplify the following expression into a single trigonometric ratio, right? What do we, they mean when they say single trigonometric ratio? We know trigonometric ratio is sine, cos, tan, right? So if, if they are like this without any other trig ratio, they are single, single single trig ratios. So that's what they mean. So in this one, they just say express the following as single trig ratios uh, so it means that we we really need to simplify them until we get a single trig ratio right 
So a one, we are given sine two theta cos theta plus cos two theta sine theta, right? How can we express this into a single trig ratio? Okay, let's take a look at this. We have sine cos cos sine. What comes to your mind? It's compound angle of sine because there's an interchange there, right? So it's sine cos cos sine. It's compound angle of sine. So we can simplify that. We know that it's compound angle of sine and we can write it as sine 2 theta. It was positive. For sine, we keep the what? The sine plus theta. Then it will be what? Sine 3 theta. So that will be the final answer. And you can see really that this is a single trig ratio. It's only sine there. So sine 3 theta. Right. Okay, number two, cos 70 degrees, cos x plus sine 70 degrees, sine x, right? We have cos cos, can you see? We have cos cos, sine sine. What comes to your mind? Compound angle of what? Of cos. Yes, compound angle of cos. So it will be cos 70 degrees. Because it's positive with cos, we change the, the sign. Because it's positive, it will be what? Negative. So it will be minus x. So even if you can go back there, you'll still get the same thing. Cos 70, cos x plus sine 70, sine x. So that's it. Okay. Okay. Number three, cos x sine 3x minus cos 3x times sine x, right? What is this? Cos sine, cos sine. Can you see? There's an interchange there. So this one will be compound angle of what? Of sine it's compound angle of sine so it will be sine 3x right remember you have to side with the angle for where there is sine there so it will be sine 3x oh sorry about this sine 3x because we have negative we keep the what we keep the sign because this one is compound angle of sine so minus x right so this will be what it will be sine 2x can you see to be sine 2x when we simplify that Okay, let's now look at the last one. Number four, we have sine 3 theta, sine 2 theta, cos 3 theta, cos 2 theta. Look at this. It is sine, sine, and cos, cos. Can you see the trick now? So here they want to trick you now because you thought maybe they will start with cos so that you can say this is compound angle for cos. Now they are starting with sine to say sine, sine, cos, cos. But we know there's no interchange there. They are saying sine, sine, cos, cos. You also still think of what? Of compound angle of cos. It's compound angle of cos. But now it will be cut different because now here they made this to be negative. So what you can actually start to do is you can actually start by removing a negative, right? So that you can have that one as positive to just rewrite it in a way that it won't confuse you so that you'll be able to uh, express it as a single trig ratio. Okay, if I remove negative there, then I'll be left with minus sine 3 theta, sine 2 theta. Then there I'll be left with positive cos 3 theta, cos what? Cos 2 theta, can you see? So I'll just put it on top there uh, because there's no space there. So it will be negative into I can first start by writing this one, right? So that it can be in that way that we are used to. Cos 3 theta, cos 2 theta. Minus, can you see there's a minus here? Minus sine 3 theta, minus sine 3 theta. Sine what? Sine 2 theta. Can you see? Sine 2 theta. Okay. So now it's perfect. It's in a way that we know cos, cos, sine, sine, right? We can now use our compound angle of what? Of course, that we already know, right? So there's a minus there. So compound angle, of course, it will be cos 3 theta. Because there's a negative in between there, for cos, we change the, the sign to be positive because it was negative to be positive. Plus what? Plus 2 theta, the other angle there, right? So now we can simplify this minus to be minus cos into 3 theta plus 2 theta to be what? 5 theta. So that will be the final answer for our number four. Okay. Okay. Let's now go and focus on B, right? B, uh, and let's see how it goes. So they're saying without 
using a calculator calculate the value of each of the following they give you cos 320 degrees times cos 20 sine 140 degrees times sine 200 degrees okay one so you have cos 320 times cos 20 minus sine 140 degrees sine 200 degrees can you see so you can see that although that you have cos cos sine sine you can't go straight into compound angle of course because the angles here are not the same can you see they're really different so what you have to do is you have to first use the reduction formulas right in order to reduce this angle in order to make them the same then you can go and use your your compound angles identities right so you can use them after reducing them because the angles are really different so you can't say cos what what minus what what because the angles are not the same so we have to reduce first then simplify like that then we can go and use those compound angle formulas okay okay in order to do this i just sketch a cartesian plane here that will help us we know that here we have all of them we have sine we have tan here we have what we have cos right so that they can help us to reduce those so let's go cos 320 uh let me just delete this cos 320 degrees let's go and check you go and check where do i find 320 320 is between 270 and 360 between 270 and 360 we have 320 and there is on the fourth quadrant is defined as 360 minus angle right so it means that that one we're going to write it as cos 360 minus a certain angle that will give us 320 so you say 360 minus 320 to get that angle to give you 40 right so it will be 360 minus 40 degrees so it will give you what uh 320 right times cos 20 it's already a smaller angle so we can't reduce it further we can leave it like that minus sine 140 140 is between 90 and 180 you can see is there on that quadrant second quadrant between 90 and 180 and how is it defined it is defined as 180 minus angle so we say 180 degrees minus a certain angle what can we minus to get 140 so you say 180 minus 140 to get the angle is 40 degrees so you know that sine 140 degrees can also be written as what as sine 180 minus 40 degrees right using those uh, reduction formulas sine 200 can you see 200 200 is found between what it's found between 180 and 270 it's on the third quadrant and it's defined by 180 plus theta so we can rewrite sine 200 as sine 180 degrees plus a certain angle obviously is plus what plus 20 because uh, sine 180 plus 20 it will give us what sine 200 can you see so that's our first step really so let's go and simplify this cos 360 minus 40 on 360 minus angle we get cos so cos will remain positive when we reduce it it will be what cos 40 degrees can you see then multiply by cos 20 degrees minus sine 180 minus 40 180 minus angle is on the second quadrant and we have sine so sine will remain positive like that as it is it will be sine 40 degrees right multiply by let's come here sine 180 plus angle 180 plus angle we have tan so sine will be negative so that one will be negative when we reduce it it will be negative sine 20 degrees can you see okay let's simplify to be cos 40 degrees cos 20 degrees negative and negative they will give us what positive sine 40 degrees sine 20 degrees can you see now the angles are the same 40 40 20 20 we can now use what compound angle of course formula in order to simplify this right so if we simplify using compound course formula it will be cos 40 degrees because it was positive for course we change the sign don't forget it was positive we'll write it as what as negative and we put that other angle 20 degrees simplify it further 40 minus 20 is what is 20 degrees so that will be the final answer for your number one okay okay let's go to number two now 
we are given cos 10 degrees sine 160 sine 10 degrees sine 110 degrees can you see there's an interchange now to say cos sine sine uh, is this sine sine okay sine sine okay uh, you can see because of the interchange obviously it's gonna be what it's gonna be a component angle of sine uh, but let's let's go and see how, how this will go right and and let's let's just go and see okay so we have cos 10 degrees times sine 160 so we can reduce that using the reduction formula right let's go and check 160 is found between which quadrant it's between 90 and 180 right and it's defined as 180 minus theta so we can we can rewrite it as sine 180 degrees minus a certain angle how much can we subtract in order to get 160 it's obviously 20 right so it's minus 20 so 180 minus 20 we know it's still 160 minus sine 10 degrees times let's let's look at sine 110 degrees right sine 110 degrees uh so with sine 110 is between 90 and 180 right but because 110 is very closely related to 90 it's it's close to 90 so i can use this other one which is 90 plus theta in this quadrant right because it's really close to 90 uh 110 so i can use this one if we know that in this quadrant is 180 minus theta and also 90 plus theta so i can write it as sine 90 degrees plus a certain angle how much can i add to get 110 it's obviously 20 degrees right so that it can be 110 like that okay let's go and simplify this will be cos 10 degrees times what is sine 180 minus 20 we check 180 minus angle it's on the second quadrant and sine is found there right so sine will remain positive it will be sine 20 degrees right uh I'm, I'm i'm quite sorry for the background noise I, I can hear this sort of like a background noise sorry about that okay so it will be sine 20 degrees minus sine 10 degrees so what is sine 90 plus 20 let's go and check 90 plus angle 90 plus angle is on the second quadrant where we found sine so the answer must be positive also here but because we are using 90 it's a co-function i think it's co-ratios of co-function something like that so we know that 90 degrees is going to change sine into what into cos so it will be cos what cos 20 degrees can you see now our angles are the same we have cos sine sine cos and the angles now are related it's 10 20 10 20 they are fine right because there's an interchange we know that this one is for what it's for sine it's common angle for sine right so it will be for sine and we start with the angle there it's 20 degrees and for sine we keep the what we keep the sine minus what minus 10 degrees so even if you go back it will still say sine 20 cos 10 cos 20 sine 10 so it's, it's still the same so if we reduce this 20 minus 10 is what is 10 degrees so this will be the final answer okay okay let's now look at example number three uh a is saying show that cos 60 degrees plus theta minus cos 60 degrees minus theta is equals to minus root 3 sine theta obviously we're gonna use our left hand side which is cos 60 degrees plus theta this is plus theta minus cos 60 degrees minus theta right if we simplify that we know that this one can be expanded right to be what cos 60 because it's compound angle of cos it will be cos cos sine sine so it's cos 60 cos theta because it's cos we change the sign to be minus sine 60 sine theta we have this negative here right in between negative so let's just put whatever follows in a bigger brackets to avoid making mistakes there so it will still be cos 60 cos theta because it's minus we, we we change the sign right because in for cos we change the sign then it will be sine 60 
sine theta. We are just using those uh, compound angle identities that we learned, right? What is cos 60? Uh, we know that 60 is a special angle, so you can just simply use your calculator and, and you can get the answer for cos 60. Obviously, it's what? 1 over 2 times cos theta minus, what is sine 60? Root 3 over 2 times sine theta minus, right? Uh, cos 60 is 1 over 2 times cos theta. What is sine 60? Uh, let me just write this properly. What is sine 60 is root 3 over 2 sine theta, right? So I can remove by negative there. Uh, let me first write this. Uh, sine theta minus times 1 over 2 cos theta. It will be minus 1 over 2 cos theta minus times positive to be negative root 3 over 2 sine theta. Can you see? So sine 1 over 2 cos theta, it will cancel out with 1 over 2 cos theta. Can you see? We'll be left with minus root 3 sine theta minus root 3 sine theta. Can you see? Minus root 3 sine theta minus root 3 sine theta, it will give us what? It will give us, uh, because we have same base, uh, then we, we're just going to add minus root 3 over 2 minus root 3 over 2. So it will be uh, minus root 3 over 2 minus root 3 over 2. So it will be 2 minus 2 root 3 sine theta over over 2. Then this 2 will cancel out this 2. We'll be left with minus 3 sine theta. Can you see? We've just proven that indeed cos 60 degrees plus theta minus cos 60 degrees minus theta, it will be the same as what? As minus root 3 sine theta. Okay. Okay. B says, hence evaluate cos 105 degrees minus cos 15 degrees without using a calculator. So when they use the word hence, they're actually saying the, the, the how you solve the previous question should help you to get the answer or there's an interconnection between the previous answer and this question they are asking you uh, that's why they use the word hands okay so they are saying let us now show that 105 degrees minus cos 15 degrees uh, will be equals to what without using a calculator so because they're saying hands it means that we're gonna use the previous answer to 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 be able to get the answer for this one right so on the previous answer they wrote the expression in this way can you see it means also they're giving us an idea because they say hence it means we also have to rewrite this expression in this way so there must be plus theta there and uh there must be minus an angle there right so let us now look for an for an angle that will add to get 105 right so you simply say 105 minus 60 to get that angle it will be what 45 degrees can you see so 60 degrees plus 45 to give us what cos 105 uh then this side this side minus let's get an angle that will subtract to get 15 uh i think it's obviously 45 so it will be minus what 45 degrees can you see so you can see that we were able to 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 write this expression by 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 looking at the previous question so we have used this word hands can you see uh it was very useful because they say hands so it's easier if they say hands you just really used uh need to use the previous uh question and its solution in order to be able to answer uh this question okay so we know that we can go in and and start expanding and all that we already did it in number a we know the answer if we know the answer of this one we can also know the answer for this expression because it's quite the same it's cos 60 plus an angle minus cos 60 minus an angle we know that this will be minus root 3 sine theta and we've just proven it above and our theta in this case is what is 45 degrees we just let our theta to be 45 so our theta is 45 so it's the same as minus root 3 uh, sine 45 
degrees. Can you see? So that's why we are using the word hands. So if they say hands, it's quite easier to solve that thing because you really need to connect that question with the previous one. That's all. So it will be minus root 3 uh, sine 45. So special angle is 1 over root 2. Then this will be minus root 3 over root 2. Right? Yeah. So that will be the answer there. Okay. Okay, great stuff. I know that this was a bit of quite a long uh, session, uh, but let's just quickly look at our last example. And it's example number four. You are given that calculate sine, 45, sine 75 degrees without the use of a calculator. So in most cases, uh, uh, like if they tell you in trigonometry, calculate this thing without the use of a calculator, they want you to think of special angles because that's the, the the angles that we know we can get the answers without using a calculator by just knowing the triangles right so all the time when they say calculate this thing without the use of a calculator think of what think of special angles especially in trigonometry okay so you are given sine 75 degrees right sine 75 degrees how can we calculate that without the use of a calculator it is we are going to rewrite 75 degrees as maybe the addition, the summation of two special angles, right? Think of special angles. I already given you 0 degrees is a special angle, 30 degrees is a special angle, 45 degrees is a special angle, 60 degrees is a special angle, and 90 degrees, right? So those are special angles. So when they say without the use of a calculator, you have to think of special angles, right? So sine 75 degrees. We know that we can rewrite this as a summation of two special angles. And I can see it can be 45 degrees and what? And 30 degrees. We know that 45 plus 30 degrees is, is 75. Then after doing this, we already learned about what? Compound angle of sine. Uh, where we have a trigonometric ratio and it has uh, two angles being summed, right? So we know how we can express that as a compound angle of sine. For sine, there's an interchange there. So it's sine cos cos sine. So we know that, right? So it would be what? Sine 45 degrees, then what? Cos 30 degrees. Because it's sine, we keep the what? We keep the sine. Then it will be cos 45 degrees, sine 30 degrees can you see there's that interchange there what is sine 45 we know is 1 over root 2 what is cos 30 we know is root 3 over what over 2 you must know this but you can just simply use a calculator but you'll basically be quite cheating because they said without the use of a calculator so but but really doesn't matter you can use a calculator if you want right if you know if you don't know the diagram for for those special angles cos 45 is 1 over root 2 sine 30 is 1 over 2 right then we can simplify this 1 times root 3 root 3 2 times uh, root 2 2 root 2 right 1 times 1 1 2 times uh, root 2 over times 2 is 2 root 2 then if we simplify this we just have our lo lowest common denominator is 2 root 2 to be root 3 plus what plus 1 so that will be the final answer for that so if you're just given like that and they like using those kind of questions because they know uh, in most students that they're challenging sometimes they can just simply give you sine 15 degrees and they say express it uh, without using a calculator you you just think of what of special angles so if it's 15 degrees is is very less now you just think of which angles which special angles can i subtract in order to get what in order to get uh, 15 degrees so obviously you will basically be subtracting 45 degrees minus what minus 30 degrees because we know 45 minus 30 is 15 then you can use your compound angle of sine you express it like that and and you simplify okay okay great stuff uh here's your fun activity exercise and uh you can just post this video now and just look at these questions and try to answer them just drop your answers in the chats i mean on the on the comment section and i'll just uh, reply to your to your comment if whether you're on the right track or not okay okay great stuff this marks the end of our lesson thank you very much for watching thank you very much for joining me today 
Uh, coming next, it's part three, which will focus on uh, double angle identities. Otherwise, that's all for today and goodbye.